Hi, today I'm going to talk about the abacus Marlowe hyperelastic function, which in ANSYS is called a response function. This is a type of hyperelastic model that sometimes is very popular to use because it's easy to use in many applications. The question I will answer today is how do these models really work and are they any good? So if you read any text on continuum mechanics, including my book, then I derive in that book, you can find out that the Cauchy stress, the stress in the material, will be calculated, can be calculated from this equation if the material is hyperelastic. And it looks like a very complicated uh, equation. There's some tensorial quantities in it after all. But really all the uh, interesting stuff goes into the partial derivatives. This psi function here is the stored energy, and the stored energy will depend on two invariants, I1 and I2. So this is an energy function, a scalar number depends on two variables. A little bit messy, and the hyperelastic functions that are available in your finite element software has some mathematical expression for how this psi function is dependent on these two invariants. Life gets much easier if you consider cases where this energy function do not even depend on the second invariant I2. So if you remove all I2 dependencies here, you get the equation at the bottom left. And this is a much simpler equation. And it turns out in real life that the dependence on the second invariant is very much smaller than the first invariant. And in most cases, you can actually get away with this simplification where you remove this dependence on the I2. And you get a scalar equation for energy as a function of one invariant I1. And uh, what we can do is if we have experimental data, um, we can actually find how this function psi needs to be. Because if we know the stress and we know the deformation, which then we know the deformation gradient, we know the, um, the left Cauchy tensor here, uh, we can directly calculate the partial derivative of psi with I1 for each value of I1 that we measured. So from that, we can then uh, integrate and calculate the energy function itself. So, so the idea here of the Marlowe hyperelastic model and the ANSYS response function hyperelastic model is that you directly get the energy function from a, a single experiment. So you get this piecewise linear function for the energy, which then gives you exactly the stress to response from that experiment. You don't have any parameters to fit, and it comes from the, from the, the data that you have. So that sounds very interesting, of course. So what I will do now is try to show you how this works in real life. So here's a blank window of M calibration. I'm going to read in some experimental data for a rubber material that comes with the, the software. So I'm going to add virtual test, experimental data, natural rubber trialor. So that's the uh, selection I will uh, use. And then I'm going to switch the graph to plot engineering stress strain data. And the three lines here, the first one is a simple tension, and then we have a biaxial tension and pure shear. So these are the three experiments that Trailer performed. And uh, let's explore how these uh, types of hyperelastic models behave. So I'm going to go to material model, set material model. And we'll start with the Abacus uh, uh, Marlow model. Let's go here and select Marlow. We say OK. And M calibration picks these numbers here now based on the data directly. So that's no, you can search for them, but that doesn't make any sense because the software only found the best set from the data. And if I click run once, we see in the solid lines here are the predictions. We see that the unixial tension test has basically zero error because that's how the model was fit to. But we do have a much higher error values for the other loading modes. Overall, the error was 8.23%. So it's not a bad model. It's a pretty decent fit, of course, and it was easy to use. Let's take a look at some other uh, option here. Let's go to set material model. We switch over to ANSYS hyperelastic, and we switch over to response function hyperelasticity. Say OK. So now it's the ANSYS response function. Uh, the software M calibration here uh, finds these uh, values for you. And here it is. Again, the error is pretty much exactly the same because, it, as, as you may have figured out, that the Marlowe hyperelasticity in Abacus is pretty much the same as the ANSYS response function hyperelasticity. So here they are. But we do have a, a somewhat big error in the uh, biaxial prediction, as we can see here. And that's 
common when you have a material model, hyperelastic model that ignores the second invariant in the energy function. We can try something else. Let's try a um, yo hyperelastic model. I often use the yo hyperelastic model. So we can use, in this case, say the ANSYS version of the yo hyperelastic model. We use three uh, terms for yo here. And we say OK. And if we run this once, we'll see if the prediction is very, very uh, stiff here compared to the experimental data. But we can calibrate from this position. We just let the software do its job. Let's say click. I'm going to stop it here. We don't need to save it. So here we have an error of 6%. So we see that the Yo hyperelastic model is also an I1 based hyperelastic model. And it has an error that's 6%. The Abacus and ANSYS type of response models have 8. So in some sense, the Yo model is more accurate than those. And they were not, as you saw, harder to use, the Yo model versus the other two, uh, a response and Marlow model. If you really want to match this data very accurately, the best model you can use is, is typically, in this case like this, is say we use the ANSYS, and we use the extended two model that comes with ANSYS. It's a built-in ANSYS hyperelastic model. I run once. We'll see that the initial guess here is really, really not so good. It, it goes up too fast. So the, instead of searching from this spot, what I will do is I will actually, I will uh, do a random search. I will let the software see if we can find a better initial guess by doing random searches here. And we'll see now with this set of parameters, we, we have predictions that are a little better, so we can do a normal search, extensive automatic search from this position. I'm just going to stop it after a few seconds. And we'll see that error is 2.65%. It's an excellent fit to all the data, which is pretty typical when you have multiple loading modes. The extended two model is an excellent choice then. So what do we learn of all of this? It's very easy to use the Marlow hyperelastic model. It's very easy to use the ANSYS response function hyperelastic models. They don't have any adjustable parameters. And you can, you can so-called calibrate them in M calibration, explore how they work. You can combine them with viscoelasticity, et cetera. But my point is that they are not more accurate typically than the other hyperelastic models that are available that I have been promoting perhaps more in the past. Particularly the Yo model I find useful. It's easy to calibrate. And it also can be calibrated to uniaxial tension or uniaxial compression data only. The extended two model that's available of ANSYS is often more accurate, but it does require more experimental data. So you have to decide if it's worth the time and money to generate that data so you can use the extended two model. Um, so that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.